Next on Live at 5, a live report from Ward of the Lead on the funeral service for a fallen firefighter. We'll also have a live report on how the people of Ward of the Lead are coping with the string of tragedies that have hit them in the last few months. And the first man busted in a statewide internet child pornography ring is sent up the river. Plus, Bob Kovacic live from Boston Spa's Victorian Parade. Next. And now, the Capital Region's first evening newscast. This is News Channel 13, live at 5. Our top story, a morning of mourning in Ward of Valida's friends, colleagues, and strangers gather to honor Tom McCormick. This is News Channel 13, live at 5. Good evening, I'm Benita Zahn. John is off tonight. Thousands of mourners from across New York State came to Ward of Elite today to honor a fallen hero, Ward of Elite Fire Chief Tom McCormick. Our Mark Mulholland was at the funeral. He joins us now live from the Ward of Elite Firehouse. Mark? Good evening, Benita. The funeral has been over for about three hours now, and mourners continue to gather here at the Water Bleed Firehouse. They're still trying to come to grips with the sudden and tragic loss of their chief, a chief who was remembered today with a huge and touching ceremony. It was a morning Water Bleed won't soon forget, honoring a man they'll never forget. Beloved Fire Chief Tom McCormick passed away Monday night while fighting a mutual aid fire in Troy. Today, thousands expressed their mutual respect. The procession wound its way through the streets of Water Valley, stopping briefly in front of the firehouse. The bell was rung five times, the traditional signal that a firefighter has lost his life. But judging from these crowds and these somber faces, Tom McCormick was much more than a firefighter. Tommy McCormick was the firefighter that if you had to make a hallway, if you had to get down a hallway with a hand line to rescue somebody, that's the fellow you wanted with you. And if you were trapped, that's the fellow you wanted to come after you. Tom McCormick's coffin was welcomed into Sacred Heart of Mary Church with the hymn, Lord, Here I Am. At the cemetery, McCormick's men, with tears in their eyes and flowers in their hands, said their final goodbyes. Tom McCormick was just 44 years old. He leaves behind a wife of just eight months. Benita? I know that our, all of our hearts go out to his family. Absolutely. Mark Mulholland reporting live in Water Valley. In fact, it has been a trying several months for the people of Water Valley. The city has endured a steady stream of tragedy. In August, the well-known coach of the high school's football team, Dan Reinford, killed himself. This past November, the football team's star running back, Christopher Lee, sustained a serious injury to his spine in a car accident. And just last night, the victim of another car accident, Vanessa Dater, died at Albany Medical Center. Last week, the nine-year-old was struck by a car while crossing the street. Now, this wealth of misfortune would try the patience and faith of many people. But what of elite residents are hanging tough in the face of these tragedies? Monica Mahaffey joins us now live from our newsroom with a look at how that small city is coping. Well, Benita, if you were born and raised in Waterville, chances are you know everyone and their business. Now, that can be a problem if you're trying to keep a secret, but in times of need, there's no greater comfort than having an entire community of friends and neighbors to lean on. This small city has suffered shocking blow after shocking blow since August. Water Valley has been down, but it's not out. In their favorite gathering places, city residents have been saying the tragedy comes in threes and that they thought they were through the worst. But Monday night brought a fourth heartbreaking loss to this community. Now, they're looking with hope toward a new year, hoping that with the final turn of the calendar page for 1997, they can leave all the darkness behind them. It's just all coming at once, uh, but everybody's dealing with it, and nobody feels like, hey, it's a bad luck city. Yeah, we're, we're a strong city. We've been through lots of stuff, and uh, we're getting a lot of recognition, actually, with, uh, with the football and with this stuff, and, and you know, it, 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 something good always happens out of something bad, so we'll be, we'll be fine. Everybody knows everybody. It's a tight community, and, uh, you know, people overcome adversity, and I, like I said before, I think this will help us become tighter, become closer. I don't know, when everybody's out, everybody talks about what we've been through and, you know, what's going on. I think people are coming together with all this. 
Now, the close-knit neighbors tell me that they've been doing all they can for the families who have been in those tragedies, been involved in these tragedies. That's everything from bringing a plate of food or doing some snow shoveling to fundraising for Vanessa Dater's family. And as you know, Benita, in times like these, a squeeze of the hand or a hug can mean just as much to a family who's really in a lot of pain and grief right now. You know, and all together, you know, you become, the individuals, you become a little bit larger when you're all working together like that. It sure is tough. Monica Mahaffey live in the news, and thanks. A man convicted of sending kitty porn across the internet is sent up the river. And do you know a home that's dressed up for the holidays? If you do, we want you to tell us about it. Those stories in a moment. But first, Howard Alcho with a first look at your forecast. Hi, Howie. Hi, Benita. How are you? And uh, we have some snow showers moving our way with some squalls as well. Sunset already occurred, 4.22 p.m. And from 7 to 8 p.m. tonight, we're looking at some snow squalls and flurries moving in from the west to east. Temperature will be around 33 degrees, so Bob will see some snow showers up there. And as he wakes up tomorrow morning, and for those of you up at the Parade in Boston Spa, sunrise 7, 11 a.m., and some snow showers and squalls will continue, temperature around 29 degrees. So a little more wintry precipitation coming our way, Benita. Thanks, Howie. Amsterdam police say they've netted two more suspects in a drug sweep that's taken them two months to complete. The men, one from Amsterdam and one from New York City, were arrested at the Amsterdam McDonald's last night. Investigators say they got a tip that a drug deal was going to happen at the restaurant. In total, Amsterdam police have charged 11 people with transporting and selling cocaine and heroin in this sting operation. The first of 14 people arrested in a statewide internet child porn sting is going to prison. 50-year-old Russell Everett pleaded guilty to one count of promoting a sexual performance by a child in exchange for a one and a third to four year sentence. The Attorney General's office says, Internet Unit says Everett sent them more than 30 pornographic pictures of girls as this young is the as type six. Of, of conduct that we uh, have characterized as child abuse. So there's no question uh, in my mind that what is depicted on these very graphic images uh, is ongoing and, and actual child abuse. Bucko says Internet porn offenders get only a fraction of the prison time they would get if they committed the act. His task force hopes its investigation will lead them to the producers of the photos as well. Make room for me. That's the message Vermont Governor Howard Dean sent to Vice President Al Gore. Democratic sources say Dean, who heads the Democratic Governors Association, met with Gore this week to tell him he's planning to run for president. Also making early plans to challenge Gore are Senator Bob Kerry of Nebraska and House Minority Leader Dick Gephardt of Missouri. Remembering three innocents, that tops our check of world and national news. The three Kentucky schoolgirls who were gunned down at their high school are being remembered today at funeral services in a Western Kentucky Baptist church. At their wake yesterday, friends and classmates wrote messages on the caskets such as, we love you and we miss you. Detroit is bidding farewell to the people's mayor. That's what Bishop Charles Ellis called Coleman Young as the funeral began for Detroit's first black mayor. Ellis, the pastor of Greater Grace Temple, says this is a day to celebrate Young's life and legacy. Despite freezing temperatures, hundreds had lined up outside the church hours before the service. Police in Boulder, Colorado are waiting to hear back from John JonBenet Ramsey's family. The new head of the investigation into the young girl's death says police want to interview the parents and the girl's 10-year-old brother again, but he says the family has not responded to that request. Police in Albany County will be out in full force tonight as part of the annual holiday DWI blanket patrols. State troopers, county sheriff's deputies, and local municipalities will be working together on the patrols. Cops will be setting up checkpoints around the country from 6 this evening, the county rather, from 6 this evening until 5 o'clock Saturday morning. Well, the capital region's coming alive with the holiday light displays, and News Channel 13 is looking for your help find the best decorated lights in the capital region. If you know of a house in your neighborhood that has decorations that could knock Santa's socks off, we want to know. Dial up our website at www.wnyt.com. We'll be airing some of the colorful holiday light displays during our news and on our internet website. Two new studies have startling results about men who donate blood. We'll fill you in, and we'll tell you where women can go for free breast cancer screenings this weekend. Plus, Kathy Lee Gifford's clothing line is drawing the wrong kind of attention again. We'll have those details straight ahead. I'm Ed Dank, live at 530. Is the state snowing a local ski resort? We'll take you to Bel Air, where businesses blame the state for their troubles. Then at 6, your car's windshield may be unsafe and you don't even know it. We'll have an exclusive report on dangerous car windshields and what can be done to avoid tragedy. 
Those stories plus reports from Montgomery, Berkshire, and Schoharie counties as News Channel 13 continues. Live, local, late breaking with Benita Zahn and John Gray. This is News Channel 13, live at 5. News Channel 13 is sponsored in part by Huck Finn's Warehouse, your whole house warehouse. There's no place like it. Closed captioning of News Channel 13 is sponsored in part by Pepsi. Check out News Channel 13 online with MSNBC and NBCIN. New information about donating blood tops tonight's check of healthy living. Two studies show that men who give blood on a regular basis are less likely to suffer from certain health problems than men who never give blood. One study finds men who gave at least a pint of blood every three years had a 30% less chance of suffering a heart attack or stroke. Scientists speculate the benefit may come from the loss of iron, a mineral that's involved in the chemical reaction that creates plaque deposits, which can clog your arteries. And in our continuing effort to help raise awareness about breast cancer, our Buddy Check 13 program is headed to Troy this weekend. On Saturday at the Brunswick Woods Apartment Clubhouse, that's off Hoosick Road near the Walmart, Albany Med and Bellevue Hospital will be offering free mammograms. The time from noon until 2.30. And now for a look at some of the other stories making news this evening. Ed Gaig joins us now with the Around the Region report. Hi, Ed. Thanks, Benita. I almost don't want to do this because there's not a lot of good news here. We have a grisly scene in New York as police find the bodies of five people in a Yonkers home. Police believe a man shot his wife and three children to death early this morning before turning the gun on himself. A neighbor told officials that, she, uh, that her husband actually heard two loud bangs as he left for work at about 5.30 but thought it was someone fixing a jammed window. A relative who lived downstairs apparently called police. Police still trying to piece together what happened so far. We have no idea about a motive. A new dimension at the Tawana Brawley defamation lawsuit. Testimony ended this morning when William Stanton, who was a lawyer for Stephen Pagonas, rested his questioning of former Brawley advisor C. Vernon Mason. When Elton Maddox, who was defending himself, stood to cross-examine Mason, he asked the court if he could bring in his own TV sets and VCRs to show two videos. Well, at that point, the judge called a recess and ended the whole thing for the week. A year after drawing fire for having clothes in her name made in sweatshops, Kathy Lee Gifford faces new allegations tonight. Gifford's spokesman says Chinese workers were allegedly forced to work 60 to 80 hour weeks for low wages in Manhattan clothing factories for virtually no pay. The owner of the three Soho shops that made the clothing under Kathy Lee's label is under arrest tonight, charged with various violations of labor laws. And as I told you, there was not a lot of good news there. No, there wasn't. No, there wasn't. But we can't fault the messenger. Good. Okay. Just ahead, we hope to go up to Boston Spa, where Bob Kovacic is live at the Victorian Parade. But first, a special candle keeps lighting up the charts. Take a look at tonight's Top 5 at 5. Coming up, News Channel 13, first warning weather with meteorologist Bob Kovacic. And time to check on the ride home. Dave Wagner has the latest at the Traffic Command Center. Hi, Dave. Hi, Benita. Right now, a couple of problem spots. Uh, Two-vehicle accident blocking the right lane on 787 northbound ramp to the Dunn Memorial Bridge. Injury accidents clearing in Colony, Albany, Shaker Road in the area of British American Boulevard. Another injury accident clearing in Boston Spa right now. Washington Street at Front Street. Also in Boston Spa, a medical emergency at the exit 200. At, um, block of the North Line Road. In Brunswick, reports of an accident at Route 7 eastbound west of North Lake Avenue, and also the Village of Boston Spa is holding their annual parade tonight, where Bob's up at, and that will close down Front Street, and expect delays also on West High Street. This report brought to you by the best takeout restaurant in town, your nearby Grand Union. For News Channel 13, I'm Dave Wagner in the Trapex Command Center. Thanks, Dave, and you're right, because to check on the forecast, we're going to head up to Boston Spa, where Bob Kabachek is, who's, uh, you're also serving as the Grand Marshal of the town's parade tonight. I am indeed, Benita, and good evening, everyone. It is, uh, oh, I'd say a moderately cold evening here in Boston Spa, not terribly bad, temperature about 37 degrees, kind of cloudy, and we got the big annual Christmas parade coming up. It starts at about 6.30, right up Milton Avenue, up Route 50 into the town park. 
We got Mr. Santa over here. We're going to talk to him a little bit later on. Let's talk about the weather. We've got some snow showers showing up in parts of the area at Broad Alban. Snow showers at Canada Johari. Here's the winter storm radar. And again, we've been tracking the colder air coming in. It's been snowing much of the day in central and western New York State. Notice the snow in Pennsylvania, Ohio, parts of New York State now. Colder air flowing in. We'll see a period of snow tonight. Don't know if it'll come quickly enough uh, to... Uh, for herald the arrival of our parade, but uh, there will be some snow around a bit later on into tomorrow morning with a coating to an inch as the uh, complex storm, one storm north of New York, another one near Cape Cod, combine and move slowly away, but a large upper-level storm is right over the New England states, the northeast for the next couple of days, and that will keep us chilly and unstable with a burst of snow from time to time. So the forecast looks this way. For tonight, cloudy with snow showers and snow squalls. And again, uh, it may start out with some sprinkles of rain this evening, but it'll change over with the dusting to 2 inches in most spots and lows 25 to 30. Coming up during the day Saturday, cloudy and cold, snow showers and snow squalls, perhaps another inch or two. And again, I think the ski resorts, uh, Catskills, Berkshires, Adirondacks, and Green Mountains will make out very well with at least 4 inches over the weekend. Highs tomorrow, 32 to 37. Here's our center range forecast, snow showers. Scattered flurries mainly in the mountains on Sunday, 36 and 20. A little sun, 37, 16 on Monday. And dry and near seasonably cold weather coming up on Tuesday and Wednesday. So again, we are live here in Boston Spa. The annual Victorian Christmas parade kicking off at about, oh, let's see, 6.30 or so. Come on down, enjoy the parade, which goes all the way up Milton Avenue, up Route 50, and around down to the town park, Santa Claus. Uh, is going to light the Christmas tree. He'll be here in a big, big high bucket above the ground. Bring the kids down, enjoy a good old-fashioned Christmas parade. We have a great time, and uh, I'm lucky enough to be the Grand Marshal of this uh, great event. We've been doing it for three or four years, and it's a lot of fun. We'll see you with more weather coming along in a few minutes. Benita. It looks just beautiful there, Bob, and yes, you are a lucky fella, but you know I'm surprised, Bob. Why? You always manage to find some kind of goodies at these things, and there you're standing, no hot chocolate, no cookies. Bob. Uh, well, well, we'll solicit for those right now and have them within the next 10 minutes. <laughs> I just figured you'd have your hands wrapped around a mug of hot chocolate or something. You got it. Well, you stay warm out there, and it does look okay. gorgeous, and we'll check in with you, and it looks like you're getting some visitors around you now. Okay. Bob Kovacic live up in Boston Spa. Well, it could be a titanic holiday season at the movies, as the most expensive movie ever made finally hits the silver screen. Jay Bobbin is next with a look at which movies will sink or swim this holiday season, and that's next. Since the holiday season is here, more big movies can't be far away, and that means you'll find Jay Bobbin close to his nearest box office. But he's managed to squeeze in a couple of moments with us and take a look at what may be some of the season's blockbusters. Jay? Hi, Benita. Well, I will be spending a lot of time at the box office in the next few weeks, that's for sure, but I don't think I'll be alone. It's interesting, this first weekend in December, when we're still in the holiday season of movies, there are no big openings really to speak of this weekend. There's a sneak preview of Home Alone 3 on Sunday, but that doesn't really officially open until two weeks from now. So I thought it might be a nice day to take a sneak peek at what is coming, so let's take a look at some of the movies that are coming up. Next weekend, we get two top TV comedy stars, Kirstie Alley and Tim Allen. As a couple whose accountant runs off with their money, they try to hide from the tax man in Amish country and for richer or poorer, which is out next week. Also next week, Scream 2, the big horror sequel, will be on the way. The big day, though, is two weeks from today. Two titans will go out of the box office. Titanic, delayed from July, but look at these special effects. It gives me very great promise for the movie. It's more than three hours long, so the popcorn and soda concessions will do very well, no doubt about that. Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet heading up a big cast, also featuring Kathy Baker as their Kathy Bates, I should say, is the unsinkable Molly Brown around whom a musical was built. There's the man I'm waiting for. Pierce Brosnan as James Bond in Tomorrow Never Dies, his second film in the role, and usually it takes about two movies for actors to hit their stride as 007. I thought Goldeneye was actually very good, but this could only be better for Brosnan. I hear it's wall-to-wall -wall action. A lot of 007 fans around this place, and we have been talking very animatedly about this, and Kevin Costner arrives on Christmas Day with his second directorial movie, Dances with Wolves, of course, being his first. In The Postman, he plays a fellow who tries to make things right for survivors of an apocalypse when the American government has crumbled. Now also opening on Christmas Day will be the new Jack Nicholson Helen Hunt movie, As Good As It Gets, and there are some other things to look forward to in there. There's also, as we mentioned, Home Alone 3. There's a new version of Great Expectations, too, that I'm looking forward to, Benita. It's kind of like The Last Romeo and Juliet. It puts a lot of modern spins on the classic story, and Gwyneth Paltrow is in that. So well, that sounds nice. It's going to be nice. I have to go back to the Bond. Last mm -hmm. night on Jay Leno, mm -hmm. um, Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan was on, and Q, Q. <laughs> came out and said to him, just 
noticed that. He said, you've gotten better, although mm -hmm. he said it with that heavy English accent. Mm. And it took him a movie to really get into the, the clothes of yeah, James Bond. Yeah, it's such a big thing, I think, when an actor takes over that role, no matter how long he's anticipated it. I have high hopes for this one. I always thought he would be great at it, but in my heart, Sean Connery. Well, I think for a lot of people, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jay. Okay. Well, just ahead on News Channel 13, the exclusive story of a ski resort that says the state is snowing them under. But first, a truly tubular experience on the slopes. The details next. First, there was skiing, then there was snowboarding, and now there is snow tubing. Snow tubing has become very popular in the mid-Atlantic ski resorts. Large tubes with handles provide timid thrill-seekers with a fun ride. Tubers even have the luxury of their own lift. In fact, Snowshoe Mountain in West Virginia has built several tubing runs that have become popular with the young and the old. And before we let you go this evening, we're going to take one last check at that forecast. How are you, Alchil? Taking a look for us. Well, tomorrow we'll start off with uh, lots of clouds and some scattered snow showers and some squalls around. We could see another inch or two in some locations, of course, higher in the mountains, and the highs will make it up to 32 to 37. Four-day forecast calling for some showers to continue Sunday and 36 degrees. Monday we'll have some morning flurries and 37 degrees. Tuesday, the best day of them all, lots of sunshine, 38, still chilly. And then Wednesday, sunshine gives way to some increasing cloudiness and the high 40 degrees. Stay tuned. Live at 530 is next.